Hello and welcome to this video in the Lockdown Learning Series where we're going to take a look at layering sounds in Contact Player. So this follows on from the previous video where we just looked at how to load sounds up in Contact Player and why you might want to do that. And now we're going to look at uh, just a, it's a simple trick where you can just layer up multiple sounds. So it's, it's nothing too complicated, but it's the beginnings of understanding a bit more of what you can do in Contact as Contact is, is pretty complicated and certainly in terms of setting up outputs and multiple instruments in it. It's probably the thing I've had more questions from more pupils about than anything else. So, with that in mind, let's just decide we want to layer up clavinet and e-piano. So I'm going to load up the clavinet just by double-clicking, and we can hear... I'm just going to play it on the external keyboard. So we've got that clavinet sound. We might want to turn the delay off, etc., but we'll play around with that in a bit. And we also want to layer that up with the electric piano sound. So... And I want to be able to play them at the same time. Now, obviously, you could just create two contacts, one with electric piano, one with clavinet in, but then you'd have to make sure you get the same MIDI to both, etc. And we just want to layer up this sound to do a bit of sound design, play around, etc. So the way we do that is here we've got this electric piano. Now, if we double-click clavinet here, as you'll see, it will appear down here as a new instrument but it won't play. So when I play this keyboard, the MIDI channel here is on channel one. So when I'm playing, because this is set to MIDI channel one, it's playing that. If we want to play this instrument, we would change the MIDI channel in the inspector. And now it's playing the clavinet. So Cubase is sending MIDI on one of the 16 channels that are available. And in this case, it's being sent to the clavinet because we're on channel two. If we change back to channel one, it goes to the E piano. Now, all we want to do to be able to play them both at the same time is to change this here. So we click on the little down triangle, go to port A, which is from the host, and then change that to one. And now they will both play at the same time. Now we can start balancing them. So obviously the clavinet is totally killing the E piano. So we're going to turn that down. So this is the volume control. I'm just going to add in a bit of that clavinet edge. Okay, if we want to solo it, we can hit the S button. If we want to mute it, so there we can hear E piano and clavinet. So we're still getting that little bit of clavinet edge in there. And you can start playing around. So, I mean, in the case of the clavinet, I'd probably turn the delay down. So I'm not keen on that delay sound. When you turn the reverb off, you get quite a different sound. And the reverb's really adding that, sort of adding quite an edge to it because it's got a cabinet by the sounds of it built into it as well. It's a bit strange. So you can play around with this. Obviously, I just picked two straightforward sounds to layer up. There's another thing. Obviously, you are getting a bit scroll up and downy. Now, if you were to add another one, let's say we decided, let's add in... Well, muted trumpet, why wouldn't we? So if we decided, uh, we took leave of our senses and decided we were going to add muted trumpet in as well. So there's muted trumpet in. We would need to scroll all the way down here and there's muted trumpet as well. We need to do the same thing, put it onto MIDI channel one. So port A from host one. Let's solo that, have a listen to that. And we can see we're outside of the key range. So look down the bottom here. This is another reason for using contact as previously. So the first notes I'm playing aren't being played because they're not inside the trumpet's range. But from here upwards, we do get it. And let's say we just wanted a little bit of quiet in there as well. We take that off solo. So now we've got this weird, it sustains on one, doesn't on another, etc. Certainly an odd sound. But I'm just doing this to show you the kind of thing you can do. Now, this gets a bit scrolly. So the key to this is there's a little minus. The, I find the controls on native instruments things can be a little bit fiddly because particularly on a high DPI screen, they can be you know, either a bit chunky or depending on whether you've got scaling turned on, a bit small. So they're a little bit small. But this little minus here basically just collapses this down a little like a minimize button you'd have on most windowing operating systems. So doing that. And now the E piano is just this little slot where we've just got volume and pan controls available. We can do the same for the clav and the same even for the muted trumpet. So now we can see them all and we can balance their volumes, change the pans as well so we can have maybe trumpet over on the right. 
and you can just keep layering these up. So if you want to do that, that's a quick way to do a bit of sort of sound design and playing around, remember, with the controls. If you want to access those controls again, you just click the plus, and then you can start playing around with the normal interface that you have for the instrument. That will all get saved with your project. So if you save your project and reopen it, it will open up exactly like this, so it will be perfectly fine. In the next video, we're going to look at how you would save those things. But for the time being, hopefully you found it useful and we'll see you again soon.